A genuine smile comes from the heart, but a healthy smile needs good dental care. What do you say? Hello listeners, here is Giridhar and you are listening to the podcast Giridhar's Garadi. Today, we have a professional dentist on the show. Not just that, she is a passionate toastmaster and an avid book reader. Also known for being social and friendly, here's welcoming the guest for today's episode, Dr. Madhuri. Hello Dr. Madhuri, welcome to Giridhar's Garadi. How are you doing today? Hello, Giridhar. I'm doing good. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. And thank you. Well, just a quick question before we start. How do you feel like being a guest on this podcast? Excited and enthusiastic. I want to know what I can do for the you and for your podcast. Awesome. And thank you so much for accepting my request and participating in this podcast for today. Thank you. All right. So, Dr. Madhuri, tell us, according to you, what is this dental care all about? Let me tell you a story. When I joined my dental college in 2003, people said, why dentistry, Madhuri? Why not ophthalmologist or why not some other branch where you can get into your specialization easily? But my answer was very, very creative and logical. I said, you have just two eyes but you have 32 teeth so you are more prone to disease so my go on dental care is when you take care of your teeth well you are less prone to most of the diseases because dental problems actually lead to many complications when you have a already existing diseases or it might sometimes lead to a new disease that you never know it is very, very important for your systemic health as well. So I recommend dental care is an overall health. That's great. Well said. Okay. Uh, so let's come from the base. How could we identify or realize if our teeth are healthy? The signs of healthy teeth, you should not bleed when you brush. And you should not have a bad breath or halitosis. And you should not have any pain when you are eating or chewing food. Like when you bite on hard things, it should not hurt you. You should only feel the pressure of biting it or eating food. But you should never feel the pain or sensitivity when you eat. So that means your teeth are healthy. And it should not bleed at any point of time when you brush or when you eat. That means your gum are healthy. So next, the gums is the mouth or the breath. So the breath should always smell nice or plain, but never a bad breath. So a bad breath may indicate so many things, maybe diseases systemically or maybe dental diseases, or it might be just a dehydration also. So I say if you have no halitosis, no bleeding in the gums and no pain during your chewing. Your teeth are healthy. And as long as they are white and clean, they are good. Yeah. Uh, looks like we are on the way to learn so many things today. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's my f- next question to you, Dr. Madhuri. Mm-hmm. What are the common oral health diseases that we may encounter? So the most known is the tooth decay. Yes, tooth decay is more and more prevalent. And the second more prevalent are the gum diseases. So nowadays we see a lot of gum diseases because of bad diet habits. Basically, when you use a lot of uh, sticky substances like candy or, you know, some love. Uh, lava chocolates or something so when you eat all those kind of things the food usually push into your gums and might lead to gum diseases as well so the most prone diseases are your gum diseases and your tooth diseases and everyone knows about tooth decay yes tooth decay is the main culprit to blame but an interesting fun fact a tooth decay takes at least three to five years to develop so when your tooth is decay It's a mere chronic negligence of your own oral care. That's all. So the tooth decay is the most important thing that we have to keep in consideration. And it can be treated when it is in initial stages, but 
when it's chronic and stay there for like three to five years unattentive, then yes, you are literally into the dental patient or into your dental diseases. So that's it, two diseases, gum diseases and your tooth diseases or decays. Okay, so what are the preliminary things that we can do at our homes if we experience any of these oral health diseases? Okay, so coming to the preliminary care, we all know we have milk dentition or deciduous dentition and a permanent dentition. So we all have 20 teeth when we are young, when we are below six years, and from six years, your permanent tooth will start coming in. And look at the miracle of the nature, you know, or the blessing of the nature. Until six years, children are not able to brush their teeth on their own, right? So until then, even the nature says like, you don't have a permanent dentition, okay? So you don't have your permanent teeth. But from when you are six years, your permanent teeth starts coming, basically your posterior or the back teeth, we call as molars. So your grinding teeth basically come in and they're only set of one for your lifetime. They come into your mouth in six years, at any age of six, basically. So until six years, it's all your mom's hard work that keeps your teeth clean. I know most of the children get their uh, brushing done by their mothers. So very few children can do at that age, like five and six, but still that is totally fine. So the first thing you have to do at an age of six is get your teeth fluoride applicated. So there is a solution called fluoride application. So if you can apply that when you are six years, when you are eight years, when you are nine years, whenever new permanent teeth came, come in, just give a visit and get your fluoride application done, which actually prevents from tooth decay. It actually makes a, a chemical reaction with your enamel and forms a more hard substance out of enamel. So that's a good thing. Instead of calcium, we'll have fluoride in our structure of the enamel. So which is a good thing, which repels bacteria as much as it can. So that is the first step I would prefer. Go for a sealant. If you have a very rough teeth, go for a sealant. That is an other important thing you can get in a dental office where you have rough teeth. So there are high chances of food accumulation or impaction. So you just get that removed, clean your teeth and get your sealant done. That means you are filling all those irregularities on your occlusal surface or biting surface of the teeth, which actually makes them smooth. And you always know smooth surfaces can't get food stuck on it. They usually slide on it. So the other thing is going for sealing. And yes, regular oral hygiene, brush your teeth just before going to bed and just after you woke up. And if you have any condition like crowding or your, your parents have dental diseases, so then try to brush maybe in the midday as well. This is what I recommend. If you eat a sticky chocolate, don't attempt to have the chocolate flavor in your mouth. Just rinse your mouth immediately after you finish drinking your coffees or milkshakes or sticky chocolates or cool drinks. Whatever you take in your mouth, just rinse it off after you are done eating it. Don't get tempted to keep that flavor in your mouth, which is actually the main reason for most of the dental diseases. So Girizar, do you drink a cup of water after you finish drinking your tea? Usually I do not have the habit of having coffee or tea. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. So interesting. Uh, then Dr. Madhuri, uh, tell us, when is the right time to consult a dentist if we encounter with any of the oral health diseases? As soon as you get into it, so prevention is better than cure. So visit your dentist at least a year or they say every six months, but I know like we are busy. So at least get in touch with your dentist at least a yearly once to get an oral checkup done and keep a clean, I mean, um, what do you say? Keep a keen observation about your own teeth. After you brush at least every two weeks or monthly once, check your teeth yourself in the mirror at least. Okay, so you can check for your any darkness of your tooth structure or any discoloration. So as soon as you find that and you doubt it has a rough surface, usually the teeth have very smooth surface on their sides, except on the biting side, the rest of the sides are very smooth. So if you can find any rough surface or 
any um, food impactions you feel after eating food. After eating food, observe your mouth or you know, try to touch your teeth surfaces with your tongue just to check where you have this food getting lodged in or impacted in your teeth. So if you feel food impactions in your mouth, just go to the dentist as soon as possible because food impaction is a big, big indication for the initial stages of dental diseases. Even it's gum or the tooth, it's the same. If the food is stuck in the gum, you have to consult. If you, the food is getting stuck in the tooth, yes, you have to consult. So food impaction or bleeding gums are the first, first important indications that we get from our oral cavity, like, hey, go to dentist. So just don't neglect them. As soon as you see a dark spots on your teeth or food impaction or any bleeding while brushing, just make sure you visit your dentist once just to rule out the possibilities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now that we have known the basics and basic oral health diseases, um, we, we have already discussed. So let's go a little deep into the concept. Uh, here, So here's my next question to you. What is root canal treatment and what are the different scenarios in which it is required? Root canal treatment, we call, we have a pet name for it. We call it as RCT, which stands for root canal treatment. So before we jump into root canal treatment, let's understand every tooth has two parts that is visible to our eye, which is a crown part, which is not visible to our eye, which is a root part that is snugged tightly into our jaw bones. Okay. So when is root canal treatment required? So the basic indications or basic guidelines for doing a root canal treatment is when you chew on a hard substance, hot substance or a sweet, if you have a sensitivity and it lingers longer than 10 minutes, that means you have some sensitivity in that area. That means you have caries. Usually the tooth has enamel, dentin and pulp. The pulp is, is the main material that nourishes our tooth and also gives blood circulation to our tooth and it has the nerve endings as well. So no infection should ever reach your pulp. If it reaches to your pulp, root canal treatment is indicated. So when is the next thing indicated? When you have an x-ray, when you have a pain, you visit your dentist and we, you have made an x-ray there, okay? So if your x-ray shows a root infection, okay, any infection, or any shadowness at the apex of your root, then you have to go for a root canal. And then uh, there is another thing. Sometimes we think it is a gum lesion, but mostly it is an infection and a pus formation. And a pus starts coming out into your oral cavity through a lesion, a pimple kind of lesion on your gums. If you, if you have that kind of, you will not have any pain in this condition. You will not have any sensitivity or nothing, but there is an infection and it starts coming into your oral cavity through a gum lesion, again, root canal treatment is indicated. What if you have a tooth decay and you have spoiled some tooth? Usually root canals have to open your pulp chamber. So you should have some minimum amount of tooth structure remain. So the rule is if your crown part is one third damaged, one third to two third, then you can go for a root canal. If it's less than two thirds, we usually don't recommend a root canal because you can't hold the crown that has to be put on it later. So it's always recommended to have at least one third to two thirds of the tooth structure remaining and healthy. Then you can go for a root canal treatment. If you have any cracked tooth, chipped tooth, then you can still go for a root canal. So these are the important things. Let me list it again. A gum lesion looking like a root canal inf root infections, decaying or dark, chipped or, or cracked tooth. And the last one is if your dental x ray shows a bacterial infection of your root, then you have to go for a root canal. These are the most important indications for a root canal. Uh, thank you, Dr. Madhuri. I'm sure all these things will be very much useful to our listeners for today. Yeah. yeah. 
okay so here's my next question to you do you think having yellow color teeth is an issue or there any ways to make them white wow so one thing i have to share i have this question from so 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 many patients the first question is my teeth are yellow so what can i do to fix it so let me tell you something the color of your teeth are dependent on genetics so what color is your tooth is de- is decided before you were born okay that is first genetical and the second important thing is usually the darker people have a darker background so usually their teeth look more whiter than the fair people so in india we have different complexion of people people right so most of the people most of the fair people ask me that why our teeth are yellow when my friend laughs you know her teeth are so bright and shiny but why not mine i told so many of my patients the same thing fair people with you know more light colored lips ha- tend to have an yellow tinted tooth it's not your fault it's just uh, you know the light uh what do you say the spectrum kind of a reflection thing that's all okay so lighter people though they have a same shade of the teeth like the darker people still the whiter people or the fairer people it looks like they have an yellow tint to their teeth okay so yes being when i was in my dental school we used to do the same thing my most of my friends you i mean i'm a darker person so most of my friends used to think i have very shiny teeth but we have checked our tooth shade under lash, natural light all of us mostly had an a2 shade which is a usual shade of indian people which is an a2 shade we all had a2 shade so what is becoming at like more uh, you know shiny and prevalent and more brighter smile for is when you have a darker skin usually your smile looks more brighter and shiny when you have a fairer skin it usually tend to your face beauty is actually dulling your smile so next important question so this is a myth which i broke right now and next important thing is most of the people think we can still change our yellow teeth into white or an a3 shade some people will have a3 shade which is a lighter yellow shade than a2 so a3 people or the patients think they can change their shade i'll tell you again your tooth color is genetical so we can't do much to it if you want brighter teeth always have two cups of milk when you are very 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 young like when you are 2 years old 3 years old that is the time when these permanent teeth start formation these teeth starts forming in your jaw bones so at that time if you have a lot of calcium you have more tendencies of having a more thicker enamel the more the increased thickness of an enamel makes your tooth look lighter so the simple thing is the first thing it's genetical we can't do much about it the second thing if you really want if you are a parent like me and if you want your children to have a brighter smile give them more milk when they are 2 to 5 years that is an important window where their body requires lot of calcium for the forming formation of this enamel layer okay and the the third important thing is yes we can see a lot of people saying you know whitening strips and all those things these whitening strips usually use bleaches in them so being a dentist i don't recommend them much because these bleaching have acidic properties in it and they usually bleach your stain from your tooth which means they are actually pulling out some molecules from your tooth sometimes it might lead to decalcification of your teeth so that means they might make your teeth a little brittle if your teeth are 99% strong with each bleaching process or whitening process you are reducing the mineral deposition of your tooth so which might make them 97 brittle and then 94 brittle with the consecutive bleaching processes so i don't recommend this bleaching processes and coming there is an other prevalent thing the toothpaste so if someone claims that our toothpaste can give brighter smile 
that means they have a lot of abrasive properties in those toothpaste and don't use abrasives on your teeth because in olden days we used to use coal powder or charcoal powder for brushing our teeth right so these toothpaste are also having an equivalent abrasive percentages i always recommend to use gel toothpaste which have less abrasives in it which protects your gums and also your tooth surface from abrasion so always keep an eye don't run for whiter teeth always make your be confident your confidence brings a brighter smile to you that's what i feel so as long as you're confident your smile is always bright so don't forget it so girida do you use any to whitening toothpaste for your teeth <laughs> uh nothing as such dr madhuri but i have been using sensodyne so far okay not sure if it is the right one to use maybe you can correct me <laughs> yeah sensodyne is mostly for sensitive teeth so if you have sensitivity yes you can use it if you don't have sensitivity then just skip to your regular gel toothpaste not even oh. the you know abrasive ones the gel toothpaste have very very less abrasives so i uh, i always recommend gel toothpaste okay okay that's great yeah. okay so let's go into the our next concept like usually why do we go for dental braces and what are the different types available in them okay that's a good question because i have seen so many people being uh, going crazy for this dental braces because everyone needs an aligned smile so let's begin with the basics okay usually the then the ortho treatment it is called orthodontics it's a specialty in dentistry so it's a topic for an orthodontist but still i'll i'll help you with a little knowledge on it so dental braces why do we use it we use it for correcting your smiles your smiles are always beautiful but for some people what happens is again it is more of genetic related if one parent has big jaws and the other parent have a small size of the tooth when compared to a regular average indian tooth size then you might land up in spacing that means you have lot of space in your teeth and it should be covered so that they touch each other they they snug they snuggle against each other right so that's what we see all all the time so this is called and spaced out dentition so we use orthodontic treatment in spaced out dentitions and the second one if the child has a thumb sucking or a pacifier usage for so long or even tongue thrusting or lip biting then their teeth due to continuous suction pressures on the teeth sometimes the teeth may come out okay they they might come out a little from their lip line and that might lead to an something called protruded bite from the anterior teeth which we usually sometimes call it as um you know more space jet we have more space jet than it is called then it requires orthodontic treatment to keep them back in the alignment and the second important thing is and the third important criteria for it is if one of your parent has a small jaws genetically but your other parent has big teeth okay the child might get a small jaw with big teeth which might lead to crowding of the teeth so at that point of time yes we need to align that tooth so when we do that we usually decrease the crowding by you know extracting one or two teeth and then we make space for the rest of them and then we're going to align it and there are other things also some have a big anterior protruded teeth which might lead to lip biting constantly we would like to correct that as well so the simple thing is when you smile your lower lip line should touch your upper teeth ending or the edges okay so if it goes beyond that lower we have to correct it if it goes if it's not even reaching that place in looking at that uh, what do you say that 
tooth positions, then we have to even correct that. So some people will not have a complete eruption of their teeth, then we have to use braces to pull them down a little bit. Some people will not follow the midline thing and then we'll use a little bit of orthodontic treatment. So braces are of different kinds, depending upon the severity of your dental condition, we will use. For some people, if it's only one tooth that is protruding out, your canine, your laterals, so your second tooth in your mouth is protruding out, then we usually use braces, which are not fixed braces. They are just like a clip, okay? That you can just put them in the morning and you have to wear them continuously so that it, the, it slowly puts it back. So the most important thing is you should get your children analyzed for an orthodontic uh, problems at an age of eight. If really your child has a crowding, they will figure it out. Uh, because of so many dimensions they're going to take in their mouth, they're going to take the facial dimensions, they're going to take the jaw dimensions, the teeth, how big are they? They're going to analyze all those things by taking a lot of measurements in their mouth. And then they give an approximation. So what happens is looking at your front first tooth, they can analyze what is your normal range of having a tooth size. Not everyone have a same size. So depending upon your first front tooth, how much is it variant from the normal? We will usually approximate it and then we'll decide whether this child is going to have a crowded teeth or a spacing out and all those things. And depending on that, we're gonna get. So there are some treatments that require in the initial stages, like eight to 10 years of age of a child, like creating more spaces or expanding your jaws if they are not growing. So these are the important, important things. To list out, there are so many conditions. We usually do orthodontic treatments when the teeth are crowded, when the teeth are spaced out, when you have underbite, which means your both the teeth are not overlapping enough to chew rightly, or if it, you have a cross bite, that means your front tooth are not on the front. Some people bite as if their front tooth are in the forward and their upper teeth are in the backward. So they have a cross bite and then some people will have a deep bite. And the other most important thing is most of the people will have their third molars, but few people don't have their third molars. In the same way, there is a condition where some of their premolars are also missing. So if you have a missing premolar, again, at an age of eight to 10, when they take a panoramic, uh, panoramic X-ray, then they will get to know whether you have the tooth buds ready for those teeth to come into their oral cavity at an age of 11 or 12. So depending upon that, you will understand whether the child needs an orthodontic treatment or not. But yes, in India, we don't um, believe in going to a dentist until we have any problem. So what happens is as soon as you think you, your teeth condition is deviating from what looks ideal, then please do visit your dentist. Because most of the, I have seen very concerned and protective parents also. There is a stage called ugly duckling stage in each child's life, depending upon uh, at an age of eight to 10. What they usually think is like, the children will have this protruded teeth, space, spacing between their central incisors or the front teeth and all these things. And the parents usually think that a child might require an orthodontic treatment. But what happens is when their laterals and canines come into their permanent dentition, once they lose their milk tooth and they get their permanent teeth in their place, usually they get auto-sorted. If they are not auto-sorted, then you have to consult your dentist. So there is a stage called ugly duckling stage where the teeth will not be in their position. They will be mal aligned as much as they can, but they will automatically align because you have genetics already wrote down for it. So don't rush for everything, but at the same time, keep a keen eye on every condition that your child is going through. And if you are a teenager, you doesn't require a dentist's opinion. You always run to the dentist to correct that because everyone is more cautious about how their looks are nowadays. So for adults, yes, it is recommended. So the ideal age for an orthodontic treatment is from eight years until you finish your growth spurt of adolescence. 
for some people it is 18 for some it is 21 22 so if you have any dental orthodontic problems eight years to 21 years is the best time to get it treated before 21 years is the best time to get treated yes you can treat it after 21 years also but you have higher ch chances of relapsing you might take longer treatments and there are higher chances of relapsing so you have to wait your retainers for longer time so teenagers out there please take a look at your teeth and if you feel you are not in your um, ideal or normal conditions or if you feel you need some please get it done before you turn 21 because that is when the jawbone is soft and can still be maniable so it, it can be easily corrected. Once your bone gets a lot of, when your growth spot, finish, growth spot finishes and when your bone is getting more calcified as we age, then it gets really difficult to sort these things out. So recognize them in the initial stages. Go for an orthodontic consultation. It's not going to hurt. It's just a consultation. Get it done maybe at eight years once, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, until only if you see any, you know, mal-aligned teeth. If not, don't worry. So have an orthodontic checkup done and then get these things recognized in the beginning stages and get the treatment done. So Giridhar, is the question answered or you want me to give of even course, the of basis? <laughs> Of course, Dr. Madhuri, I feel it's answered. It's quite interesting to know all these facts and I really appreciate the way you explained everything in detail. Yeah, thank you, Giridhar. All right, moving on. In general, what are the products that we use for dental care and why do we use them? So you mean like toothbrushes and toothpaste? Uh, yeah, at the same time, the mouthwash and maybe the other things that uh, usually uh, dent I mean, dentists prefer. Okay. So the first thing everyone uses, the toothbrush, the toothpaste, and some use tongue scraper as well. So other things like mouthwash. Yes, mouthwash is very good to use every time after your meal. Usually the mouthwashes come with... Uh, and chlorohexidine, it's a solution. So it actually cleans up entire mouth and it has a little bit of antibacterial solution in it, which actually kills the bacteria in your mouth. So what happens is in mouth, for example, let's take in mouth, the usual bacterial count is 100 bacteria. Okay, let us think as 100 colonies, okay? So if you keep using this Listerine, then what happens is you always keep the count of bacterial colonies less than 100. So if what happens is usually if the colonies of the bacteria are more than 150, that leads to dental decay. So it is primarily like by rinsing with the mouthwashes, you're cleaning up your mouth with all the impacted food that is stuck on your gums or teeth or in between the grooves of your teeth. So you're cleaning that up. At the same time, you are quickly giving an application of this antibacterial solution on your teeth. So this is a very good practice to do, but don't overdo it. Do, do only once or twice after your meals. I have seen so many people rinsing them in corporate worlds because of the meetings and all, whenever they feel they might have you know, bad breath because of dehydration, they usually cover up that smell with using Listerine gums or rinses. So it's not very healthy because over a period of time, if you overuse these mouthwashes, it will decrease your saliva production in your mouth. Again, saliva is a mouthwash that is secreted by our own body. It actually maintains the pH in our mouth. It actually keeps the bacterial colonies in check. So you helping it using a mouthwash is a good thing one, like every time after meal or something like that, but don't overdo it like every half an hour, every one hour, every two hours. Don't use mouthwashes more than three to four times a day. That is what doctors say. If you do that more than three to four times, you are actually shutting down 
your saliva production. So saliva, if the saliva production shuts down, usually the saliva have a free calcium, which actually keeps your enamel stores, calcium stores replenished. So you are hitting on that. So you're making your enamel weak by not having saliva. So use mouthwashes, but keep in moderation, like only three times a day max. And now anyway, we're gonna brush two times and three times of mouthwash is good. And coming to the gums, we have uh, something called gum massaging creams. So that is also good, but use only once or twice a day, just after brushing. Always massage your gums. It increases your blood circulation. And at the same time, it keeps your gum, it keeps the collagen content of your gum very uh, optimal. That, that keeps your gum very strong, okay? Because most of your food, when you chew on your teeth, it comes back to the gums and it's gonna put a pressure on the gums. So it's always, always important to keep your gums clean as well. And the next thing is dental floss. Yes, obviously, when you have spaces, please do use dental floss. As we age, we tend to get spaces in between our teeth. It's very normal. So try to use a dental floss. If you have a very, very tightly contacted teeth, that means the teeth, the, there is no space between the teeth and you can't reach there, don't force yourself because sometimes it might lead in you know, a laceration of your gums. So don't do that. So use in moderation. If the floss can go with a minimal force, then get it done. If the floss is not going in after you putting a little amount of force on it, then don't force it, it's okay. So the good things to use is using a gum massaging cream and using mouthwashes, using dental floss and tongue scrapers are also recommended. So again, be in moderation, don't cut your tongues, don't excessively scrape it because it's going to hurt your taste buds and the sensory cells on your tongue, even your muscles. So don't overdo it, but do everything in moderation to keep your oral hygiene very good. And if you want a good tone of your muscles, try to have gums, the Listerine gums. It's okay. But again, don't do it because don't do it excess because it overtones your face and it might make you look more older than your age. So if you have a habit of chewing chewing gums and all these things, please do it in moderation, okay? So these are the things I can say. Keep everything in moderation is the key here. So back to you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So apart from these products, uh, what are the natural things that every one of us can do at home uh, to maintain a healthy mouth and strong teeth? Okay, the natural things, I know some people do oil pullings and all those things and please don't do them because oil is again, comes under, um, you know, there is something called a pellicle formation. So what is a pellicle formation? The extra food particles left in your mouth after eating food, try to deposit on your enamel surface. That is called a pellicle formation. If you do oil pulling, you're going to put one more coat on the pellicle and then that might make your, give you a tough time to clean that pellicle. So why we usually brush our teeth is to remove this pellicle that is formed on your tooth every day because there are different stages of, uh, you know, calculi formation on your teeth. So first, every day we, we get a pellicle formation. So for seven days, the pellicle starts thickening if you don't brush. And after seven days, it starts calcium deposition. As I told you, the saliva has free calcium and it tries to deposit on the enamel, okay? But if your enamel is covered with this pellicle, the saliva don't know it. And it starts depositing it on the pellicle and it forms thick stone kind of hard things called calculi on your teeth. And that leads to not just tooth decay, but a severe, severe gum diseases. So let me tell you, the most severe gum diseases, you might lose your teeth. They just lose all their bone and they're going to wiggle and they're going to fall off. So just make sure you're removing your pedicle every day by brushing your teeth, okay? So that's it, Kiridhar, back to you. 
okay uh, thank you madhuri once again for explaining everything in detail uh, so a last but one question for my from my end mm-hmm. what are the benefits of maintaining a good dental care uh, the first thing is confidence giridhar so confidence is the most important thing and second thing is uh, it was a research that has shown that if you have a dental infection as we have lot of blood circulation and blood vessels opening into our gums if you have tooth infections or oral cavity infections there are high tendencies of this bacteria entering into our blood stream uh, causing infections blood infections kind of thing okay so it might leads to viral the fevers might look like virals but we usually call it as bacteremia so which leads to bacterial blood infection so keeping your mouth clean is very very important it is it is just like cleaning your own plate after you eat food right so you have to always clean your clean your plate just because that is hygiene in the same way mouth is the entry point for anything into your body right the food or anything so if you don't keep it clean what happens is it might lead to longer term puff i mean we don't even feel like oh is this caused by an oral disease we don't even find the root cause of it but for most of the things like unknown bacteremias are usually caused by poor oral hygiene so it's very very important to keep your oral cavity clean all the time no one wants a bad breather talking to them you know sitting next to them if there is a bad breather no one wants to talk to them so it's more about personal hygiene confidence and then being healthy as well at the same point of time amazing amazing so before we wind up lastly dr madhuri just one message for our listeners with respect to our today's concept importance of dental care okay thank you so much giridhar i have something to add here as well during my college days i had a research done do you know how dental care is spread no not exactly <laughs> yeah so dental care is actually spread spread by toothbrushes how many toothbrush holders each family have so we yeah, have usually one or two <laughs> usually one or two so we have been the society have been overly impacted by the advertisements that we see in the tv so in that all the family keeps their brushes in the same toothbrush holder right and in their washrooms basically so what the research told is if you keep your toothbrushes in your washroom and you take bath in the same room okay then so then the bacteria that are stuck on to your bathroom walls tend to propel and settle on your toothbrushes so always keep your toothbrushes at least 6 feet away from your washrooms and toilets that is what dentists recommend and always try to keep them near a window where there is at least a direct sun for 2 hours to sterilize your brushes so that they can be very very clean by the next time you use them so most of the dental care is spread from their parents to their children because of sharing same tooth brush holder are you amazed by that's, listening to it yes of course uh, in fact that's quite uh, surprising to know that yeah so if parents have these dental diseases try to keep your brushes away from your children so it is always advisable to have to to keep their toothbrushes away from each other okay so keep each children's toothbrush away from themselves and allocate them something you know after you brush your teeth you keep your toothbrush at you know near a window or something we you we have a uv rays sanitizer toothbrush sanitizers as well so but they are not so prevalent in india but um, we can still find them if you can go online in amazon you you will still find toothbrush sanitizers that's good if you can find a toothbrush sanitizer but what i do is diy jugad right 
So the simple jugad is take a cup of mouthwash and keep your toothbrush head in that mouthwash and then, and then just shake it off with the excess and then let it dry in the direct sun for one hour. So you brush your teeth in the early mornings, right? So before you go to school, just see which window gets one hour of hot sun and then keep that on the window panel and just go. Okay, so in that way, you are sterilizing your brush in between brushing your teeth. So toothbrush has to be discarded every six months. And do you know, you have to discard your toothbrush every time after you get an oral infection. For example, if you have a fever, once you recover from your fever, discard it. If you have a sore throat, once you are done with your sore throat, either sterilize it or discard it. And if you have very you know, systemic infections or if you have caries and you got all your tooth restored or filled with cement, try to discard that brush and use a new brush. Repeating this old brush, what happens is the, the decay causing bacteria are sitting on the toothbrush. And now you are after getting all your teeth cleaned, restored and all the decay excavated and then restored with cement, you are using the same toothbrush to spread more infection to your healthy teeth. So always, always, whenever you get your teeth fixed and all your caries is done, try to use a new brush. Don't use the old brush because your old brush is carrying everything that you have. Do you know <clears throat> the oral tissues have a lot and lot of regeneration happening every day. So the toothbrush carries your dead cells from your oral cavity, your bacteria, everything. So that is why uh, even you can see in so many movies, right? If you have to find a culprit, you just steal the toothbrush and give it to genetics lab because your toothbrush have all the dead cells from your mouth as well. So it's highly recommended to keep your toothbrush clean and dunk them in a mouthwash sol solution and let them dry in a hot sun for at least one hour a day and at least keep them six feet away from any propelling water sources like your toilets, showers, kitchen sinks, keep them away from there. So these are the important things I want to share because my research has told out of 10 patients of uh, who complains of an unknown viral fevers or bacterial fevers, out of 10 patients, two patients, they get it because of poor oral hygiene. So stay away from diseases, be healthy. Hygiene is an essential, it's a necessity. It's not fashion, it's not trend. What do you say, Giridhar? Yes, exactly. Can't agree more than this. And thank you once again for sharing such an important message to our listeners today. I'm happy. I'm happy your listeners are happy about listening all these things. Yes. Well, uh, so before we bid adieu, uh, now it's time for us to move on to a special segment in our podcast that is the rapid fire round. Are you ready? I'm kind of ready. <laughs> okay. So Dr. Madhuri, here's my first question to you in the rapid fire round. Okay. Dentist or doctor? Dentist. Okay. Smile or laugh? Smile. Okay. Toothpaste or tooth powder? Toothpaste. Okay. Close up or Colgate? Close up. Especially gel. Okay. Okay. This is in line with what you have already said. Yeah. Okay. Pizza or burger? I would go for burger. <laughs> okay. Any reason? Because at least burger have a lot of vegetables in it, like onion, tomatoes, lettuce, and any other thing. And you have a protein part in it. But pizza, I don't see any protein part on it. So your patty is a protein, right? So I, go, I better go with burger than pizza. Yeah, even the toppings are very less in pizza. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Limka or Fanta? Can I choose none? Because I'm against carbonated drinks. The carbonated drinks have a lot of acidic pH, which actually affect your teeth. So I don't drink cool drinks. Yes. 
Of course, you can choose. None. Yes, I am none. <laughs> okay. Vizag or Hyderabad? Vizag. Okay. Since it's your hometown. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Sweet or hot? Always sweets. Yes, I'm a dentist, but still I'm a person who likes sweets a lot. <laughs> but I rinse my mouth every time I eat my sweets. Listeners, rinse your mouth. You can have sweets. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, eating what you love at the same time with caution and precaution. Yeah. Yes. Okay. School or college? Definitely school. Medical okay. colleges are no fun. <laughs> yeah. You keep on experimenting, right? Yes. Okay. So, Dr. Madhuri, Madhuri my last question in the rapid fire round. Uh -huh. My most favorite one. Let's see what you are going to say. Okay. Giridhar or Mazuri? It's always Giridhar's Karadi. <laughs> okay. Here also you have chosen none. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always Giridhar. <laughs> wow. That's uh, really good to hear. Amazing response. And thank you so much, Dr. Madhuri, for being with us today on this show. We look forward to having you once again on the podcast in future. Yeah, please, if your listeners have any questions, they can uh, ask the questions at the bottom of your video and I can definitely answer them. Yes, the definitely. Yeah. Yes. All the amazing listeners out there, you can always ask any question while you are listening to this podcast in the comment section. And our Dr. Madhuri is here to respond to you. Yes, I'm here. Thank you once again, Dr. Madhuri, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Girida, for uh, inviting me to this show because there's a lot of information out in the Google and out in so many TV shows. But what happens is most of them are like genuine and some are like more of business oriented. So I have seen a false indications given for doing for root canals or for ortho treatment, all those things. Before you get a treatment, just discuss with your dentist. That's what I say. You know, don't get into this web med or Google things. Just talk to your dentist. Your dentist is a licensed person to help you with all this information because my patients have come up with so many random questions to me when they come for treatments. And, you know, uh, I have to educate them. Education is a basic point here. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to educate our listeners or share some facts and breaking some myths today. So thank you so much, Giridhar, for inviting me today. And I enjoyed this time spending with you and the listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you so much. Well, that's the end of the episode, listeners. I'll be back next week with another amazing guest. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. See you.